Hello everyone, thanks for watching. The following video was made immediately after my C7T1 cervical arthroplasty. Please forgive my ums, buts, ands. I had a little bit of a difficult time gathering my thoughts, but hopefully you enjoy it. Thank you. Hello, my name is Nathan Taylor. I uh, just today got a cervical C7T1 disc arthroplasty, and I wanted to just kind of make two videos. One today talking about how um, I got to this point and what the surgery, day of surgery was like and then another one in 6 to 12 weeks after I've had a chance to recover and kind of have a, an idea of what my short term prognosis and outcome is. Um, so I'll try to make the symptoms part of it and history somewhat brief. Um, in March of 2019 I woke up one day and noticed I had numbness on my right side in my fourth and fifth finger. Uh, numbness and tingling and it took me a while to figure that out. I didn't know if I had ulnar nerve impingement, uh, if I was having a shoulder issue, what have you. Um, and so I talked to a few people and uh, I was encouraged to go see a orthopedic spine surgeon or a neurosurgeon, either one, and see what they had to say. So I went and saw a neurosurgeon and got an MRI and MRI shows, yeah, you have a herniated disc, C721. Um, I was given some options and at that point in time, a uh, surgeon uh, really encouraged me to go with conservative treatment, which made sense. Um, so I started conservative treatment in May of 2019. And for me, conservative treatment was physical therapy. Um, so lots of stretching, um, massages, cupping, needling, um, those types of things, traction devices. Um, my symptoms, they didn't get better. Um, they gradually got a little worse or they were stable. Um, and so in August of 2019, so after physical therapy twice a week for a few months, we um, decided to do an injection, uh, cortisone injection. So uh, anterior injection right here. And as soon as the injection was in, life-changing, world's good, right? This numbness tingling is gone. Um, I feel like this is it, um, but I continue to go to PT. Um, and I also, in addition to that, I was encouraged and uh, tried to start eating better, exercising more, um, doing some yoga um, through the video on demand stuff with Peloton. That was very successful for me personally. Um, from a fitness standpoint, I did get a lot more fit, believe it or not, when you look at me now. Um, and the thing that I kept talking to my physical therapist about in my pain doc um, was that I had this pain, this dull pain my right shoulder kind of behind my scapula started it by my neck and kind of radiated down into my back. And it almost felt like someone had a ball peen hammer, you know, things got a little circular back to them and just tapping on me. Um, and that pain continued to get more and more pronounced um, quickly. Um, almost, you know, it started like every couple of weeks, I was noticing it more and more. And then it was like every week it was getting worse and worse. Um, so this is November of 2019 when this is really starting to kind of this uh, pain's really coming back tingling numbness still 90 percent improved um, obviously the injection's wearing off we schedule another injection for january of 2019 by the time we get to this injection i am i'm hurting um, unfortunately that injection uh, we did a uh, posterior injection for whatever reason i don't know um, and that injection really only lasted for two and a half weeks um, and my symptoms came back worse than they ever were before. Um, so then I decided to do my research. I, I, I was somewhat exhausted um, from the conservative treatment method and knew that I needed to look at least look at surgical intervention. Um, so I chose to go to a neurosurgeon neurosurgeons and orthopedic spine surgeons do the same things for the most part. Um, their training is very, very different. Um, and for me, the right answer was a neurosurgeon. Um, so you can do your research and decide for yourself, but those are two different options for you. Um, I found someone who was very um, highly recommended from various people because he does a lot of disc arthroplasty. I believe in disc, arth disc arthroplasty, a lot of studies out there, you can look it up. Um, I don't think it's the future of cervical surgery. I think it's already here. Uh, the data is great. Uh, 25 to 33% lower reoperation rates, preservation of motion, lower chance of ASD or adjacent segment disease. And so um, made a lot of sense to me. Um, unfortunately, 
disc arthroplasty. Um, the implants that are made are not, none of them are indicated. Uh, C7, T1, uh, it's a pretty, pretty low, obviously, right? It's the junction of your cer cervical and thoracic spine. So a little different forces there, more shear forces. Um, doesn't have a lot of motion. Um, the surgeon that I went to said that he had done several of these over the years on people at C7T1 and so had his colleagues and they had good anecdotal evidence. Um, obviously not studies and a lot of great evidence, but um, I think if you look of all cervical injuries, uh, C7T1 is like one something percent of all cervical injuries. So you don't have a large patient population. Um, and so it's pretty unusual just the way it turns out. Um, so this was um, March, or excuse me, February, I saw the surgeon, and we originally scheduled surgery for April. Um, obviously, um, things, a lot of things have changed in the world, um, but in that time also, um, my pain was increasing tr tremendously. I had an event one evening where I had had a long day. Um, and as the days would, would wear on, my pain would become more and more intense. Um, and I kind of bent over to grab something and just froze up and fell. And I was, it's weird to say, but I was stuck on the floor. Um, brought me to tears. Just the pain was so intense. Um, and I had almost like muscle spasms. I just couldn't, I couldn't move my arm. I mean, just, it was bad. Um, and so I went back to my pain doc and, um, I did start taking a few different things. It gave me another um, Medrol dose pack, and I had been taking oral steroids on and off, um, you know, throughout the last year. Um, this would have been my third one, um, gabapentin, which is used to treat some nerve pain. Um, and then I also got uh, some Norco, which is an opioid pain medicine um, with some acetaminophen in it. Um, I took the gabapentin, uh, the, the, the dose pack, and then I would take the Norco twice a week in the evening to help me sleep. I had a lot of trouble sleeping, um, and I would take it just at night because I couldn't. I didn't want it to interfere with my work schedule um, during the day. Um, so uh, my surgery gets moved up because of all of the things that are changing in the world, um, and my symptoms are getting worse and worse and worse. Um, I actually went to the ED one night because of the episode I described earlier, um, you know, I was really concerned that I was having um, an event, um, that I was having cord issues. Um, so I went in, today is my surgery, March 26th. So I had surgery today at 10 a.m., so about 12 hours ago from when I'm making this video. Um, it was an outpatient procedure, obviously, because I'm back at home. Um, the surgery itself, the operative time was less than an hour, but total time I was in the OR was uh, an hour and 40 minutes or so wheeling you in and setting you up and getting you back out. Um, when I woke up, 90% of my nerve pain that was just crippling and debilitating here on the right side of my body was gone. Um, this was the first time I've ever laid down and sat up and not had tremendous amounts of pain. Um, you know, my pain was, I was laying on my right side, reaching, grabbing a gallon of milk, um, changing my kids' diapers. I have two kids in diapers. Um, I mean, just daily things. Um, and so today, um, a lot of these motions, obviously I'm not picking up milk, picking up my children. I haven't changed diapers today. Sorry, honey. Um, but, you know, I'm not, I can move. Um, obviously I have some restrictions on weight and range of motion, but huge improvement so far. 12 hours after surgery, um, but was, you know, my pain now, I have some, my traps are a little sore, which he had kind of informed me prior to surgery, like those are some of the side effects of surgery, you're going to be a little sore, a little hoarse, obviously, in my voice, um, but I mean, pain-wise, nothing compared to two days ago, um, and so... I'm very interested to see how I do, you know, six weeks from now when I can add to this video. Um, the one, to me, the biggest risk of cervical disc arthroplasty in general is we only, we, um, they really only have, you know, 10 to 15 years of data. Um, and there's different types of cer cervical discs. Um, and when you go and look them up, um, I had found that the literature was very um, positive on three primary discs, uh, the Prodis, the synthes Prodis, which was a game to Pew synthes, Johnson Johnson, which since has been divested, the Zimmer Moby C, and, and then the Globus Secure C implant. Um, 
and my surgeon uh, uses uh, Globus and gave me a secure C implant. Um, so, but you know, data is now 20 years out. Um, and obviously I would hope that this would last for 20, 30 years. Um, the bailout most likely would be a fusion, uh, but I'm a young patient. So, you know, I would hope that this would last as long as possible. Um, the one other implant that I looked at and considered was uh, a new implant M6, uh, which is, uh, it's been in Europe for a while, but it's very neat if you look at it. It articulates and provides cushioning and comp you know, to absorb shock. Um, but it just received FDA clearance in the United States in the fall. Um, and I wasn't aware of anybody who'd been trained on it and didn't use it for several years and had good follow-up and felt comfortable with it. And so it just wasn't, to me, I didn't aggressively pursue um, utilizing or looking into that implant just because of how new it is. Um, and these other implants have great track records. They're semi-constrained devices. And so um, it was explained to me that it helps resist some of the shear forces because you see a lot more shear forces at C7T1 uh, than you do in other parts of the cervical spine. Other parts of the cervical spine, you have a lot more motion. Um, but I feel great. Obviously, um, this is my incision. Um, minimal pain. I am taking, I continue to take gabapentin. Um, I am taking uh, oxycodone uh, today, day of surgery, and then tomorrow, one day post-op. Um, and then uh, the plan that uh, my surgeon and I came up with is then I'll cease taking the oxycodone. Um, and I will take uh, some anti-inflammatory medications, prescription anti-inflammatory starting Sunday um, for two weeks. Um, and eight pound weight restriction for three weeks. We kind of reevaluate, maybe go up to 20. And then hopefully at six weeks, we have, um, you know, all the information that we need that kind of re reduce or eliminate a lot of those restrictions. So, but that's where I am tonight. I'm really excited to go to sleep. Um, I'm surprisingly very comfortable. Um, very, very excited. I feel great, obviously. A lot of people feel great on the day of surgery. So, we, you know, again, anxious and excited to kind of see what tomorrow and the next week and really the next six weeks hold and to kind of see um, how we progress and what issues I run into. So I'll update this video then. But for right now, um, I've had a very good experience. And uh, with my the data set that I have of 12 hours long, <laughs> um, I'm very optimistic of what's going to happen.